Getting a big name to voice a role in a video game used to be prime bait to ship loads of copies back in the late 90s and early 2000s. Especially if it was a movie tie-in, aiming to launch around the same time as the major motion picture. Just take a look at the hype train for the Return of the King game. And so with that, let's take a look at some that were just collecting a paycheck. All were horribly misused. I'm Benroy from WhatCulture.com and this is 10 times video games wasted big actors. Number 10, Dennis Haysbert, Splinter Cell Panda or tomorrow. The missions that Sam Fisher embarked on in the early games wouldn't be the same without the voices in his ears. Like Michael Ironside who played the titular character, they added some much needed weight to the mission and sometimes some levity. But if there was one actor in the series that might be as important as Ironside, it would be Don Jordan who played Lambert. With Jordan seemingly having the only voice that could command Sam Fisher and tell Michael Ironside what to do. And then with the sequel, he was thrown in the bin thanks to Ubisoft wanting some more star power in the game. And with 24 being the biggest show of its time, they turned their attention to Dennis Haysbert. Not only was this lazy, but he couldn't fill the shoes of Don Jordan. With one game, that voice was already iconic. Whilst he was excellent in 24, he just didn't fit in Pandora Tomorrow, and his delivery was kind of lackluster. Thankfully after this, order was restored, and Don Jordan was never replaced again. Number 9. Daniel Craig, Quantum of Solace The James Bond games have a weird relationship with the current leading man. Either they seem to go all the way and portray the super spy of the current era, or they seem to go off and do what they want, with Agent Under Fire seeming like a cheap parody. Just look at fake Piers Brosnan for example. That face is awful and don't even get me started on Q. This game looks decades apart from Nightfire, and at least by the time of Everything or Nothing, we got full Brosnan. When it came to the Activision Bond games, they at least coughed up the money to have Craig be there in voice and in face. But this was wasted because it was a Bond shoot em up. Yes, these were movie games, but they took too much liberties. They became cover shooters or cod likes, and the fact that Quantum is actually two games stitched together, it also made this one a rough time. Now Craig did get some redemption with Bloodstone, but in almost every other Bond game from Activision, especially Quantum, he was just there and lifeless. Number 8, Terry Crews, Crackdown 3. Now look, you need to hear us out on this one, because Terry Crews deserved better. Yes, he got to be all Terry Crews in Crackdown 3, but the fact this game was delayed forever and then dumped out on Game Pass, it was just a real shame. Sure, this didn't hurt the actor's stock, but he's going to be the face of failure forever on this one. Yes, someone might remember the cloud destruction mechanics in this game, but whenever people talk about this one, his face is going to be on the thumbnail. It's just a shame that Cruz's energy wasn't used in a better game. But thanks to Crackdown 3 being a disaster, Cruz was really wasted. So I don't know, maybe he'll show up in the Saints Row reboot. Number 7. Liam Neeson, Fallout 3 when you manage to score a big actor like Liam Neeson, you should really get the most out of them. He's been a Jedi, he's become a household action name, and even left his mark with his stunning performance in Schindler's List. So why did Bethesda cast him in such a minor role in Fallout 3? It's just puzzling. It isn't cheap getting an actor like this through the door, let alone in a recording booth. Their time was at a premium, and could have and should have been more integral to the game. Yes, the main character's father is important, but not when they're gone for 100 hours. Neeson could have been weaved in more to the plot, or at least shown up more than twice. Just just take a look at Martin Sheen and how he was used in Mass Effect. Sure, he wasn't in every scene, but he was prevalent throughout. And this is where Bethesda should have gone with his actor and not just used him as a marketing tool. Number 6. Christopher Walken, True Crime, Streets of LA There are a few unique actors out there that just get a way of playing themselves on screen. And yes, Christopher Walken is certainly one of them. In his later years, Walken has basically become a cameo, whereas in his early days, he was playing true characters. Just take a look at Deer Hunter for example. But when he was cast in True Crime, the devs basically turned him into a soundbite machine. This role for him really sounded like a break from his day to day, rather than a proper job. You could picture him reading this off a sofa in a smoke filled room with the microphone just shoved in his face. <laughs> Some of these deliveries don't even sound like he's acting at all. Someone probably made their dream come true when they cast Walken, but was it worth Activision's money? Probably not. Just listen to some of these lines and you'll see that it's some of the cringiest high profile acting in gaming history. Number five, Keith David, Mass Effect 1 and 2. Look, this isn't a list of the worst performing actors in video games because Keith David would not be on here. Every role that Keith David picks up is made better thanks to his voice. He's a perfect human being and we must protect him. Ever since his debut role in John Carpenter's The Thing, it's been a true joy to see Keith David pop up in everything. Now most players will know the great one Keith David from his time in Halo when he played the Arbiter, but a close second of his has to be Anderson. A guiding light in the first Mass Effect game, David's voice perfectly sets the tone for the galaxy spanning adventure to come. 
one. Then Anderson simply spends the rest of his time on the Citadel. Wasted. For all we know, he could be Katzin. Yes, you can go back and visit him, but he's only got about four or five lines. The point here is that Keith David's phenomenal and should have been used much more. Maybe he could have even been in the team, as we got this teased in Mass Effect 3. But it was never the case until the very end. Basically, can we just have more Keith David in everything, please? That'd make everything better. Number four, Michael Bean, Aliens, Colonial Marines. The list of issues with this game would be longer than any we've ever posted, trust me, and you've all heard so much about it by now. But one aspect that's really undersold in this one is that they bring back Michael Bean, and then it's terrible. Bringing back Bean could have been the saving grace for this one, but instead, he just sounds uninterested and bored. Bean puts this down to not really enjoying his time working on the game, and you could probably understand why. Perhaps a certain magician was there, you know, directing his lines. Or maybe he showed him the contents of some USB drive. We'll never know. And this really is an outlier for Bean when it comes to his body of work. So really, we can only blame Gearbox here, as we can blame them for pretty much every other thing wrong with this game. This could have been one of the best licensed games out there, and instead, it became the worst. Number 3, Kiefer Sutherland, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Another case of 24 actors wandering into video game roles? This was the catalyst for the entire list, with this casting being mind-boggling so many years later. Once you finish The Phantom Pain and have to sit through some of the final moments, they can really be disappointing. Because of course this game was cut short, and also Kiefer just isn't Snake. You can argue that the story kind of makes sense why it's a different voice, but still. David Hayter has been the voice of the legendary Snake since 1998, and it didn't matter what time period it was. And what makes this worse is that Kiefer barely says a thing which is a real left turn, as the character never used to shut up, and we just wanted to hear him speak. Not only that, but the delivery is bland, uninterested, or even confused, and just feels like Kojima hiring one of his favourite actors, which is basically what his next game, Death Stranding, became. But at least there, none of them were wasted, and this late in a franchise, you just don't recast the main character. Number 2. Peter Dinklage, Destiny now what's the most logical thing to do when an actor suddenly rises to fame out of nowhere because of one big hit show? A show that's so damn popular, everyone and their mother is watching it. Well, you cast them in your brand spanking new video game franchise of course, and then strip away everything the fans love, because that makes sense. But to be fair for those over at Bungie, Dinklage never really had much luck outside of Thrones, but none of his roles were as dire as this. I've said this a lot about some of these actors, but this role was bland, and Dinklage felt dead inside. Looking back at his replacement and it's just night and day. Now was this down to Bungie direction or was this down to Nolan North just getting voice acting more? Who knows? Maybe Ghost just needed a few more glasses of red wine. Number 1. James McAvoy. 12 minutes. And finally we have the most confusing one in recent memory. For a game like 12 minutes that's marketed around the names it's got, it's really puzzling how they use them here. Now sure Willem Dafoe is well Willem Dafoe, but unlike Christopher Walken earlier, puts his Willem Dafoe-ness to good use. Daisy Ridley's here but she's just fine I guess, and could have really been anyone you wouldn't have noticed. Though the most shocking one here has to be James McAvoy, who if wasn't advertised, you probably wouldn't even recognise was here. Everything we know and love about McAvoy is stripped away, even that fantastic Scottish accent. Now, was this down to the direction or was this McAvoy trying to do something different? Either way, it just doesn't make sense. If you cast someone like McAvoy, you want McAvoy. And when Defoe was cast, we got Defoe. This game should have embraced his Scottishness, or at least let McAvoy be a bit like young Charles Xavier, which is a happy middle ground, I guess. And that's our list. That's 10 times video games wasted big actors. Can you think of any more? I'm sure you can. So let me know down in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And while you're down there, follow us on Twitter at WCultureGaming and follow me at BenRoyTurner. And on Instagram as well, why not? Anyway, until next time, no more games.